In a series filled with anime tropes that you'd seen in countless shows before, and where teenage drama takes the spotlight, you'd expect a simple show like everything you'd seen previously. Just another school day where boy meets girl, and they can both embark on the journey of love. Well, scratch that. This is not the story you were ever prepared for. This is a story of boy meets girl, only for it to spiral deep into a journey of jealousy, betrayal, and heartbreak. Today in Let's Talk, School Days. School Days. At first glance, your typical high school anime, but oh boy, oh boy, boy, boy. This show takes your usual teenage love drama to a whole new level that made me question my reality more than the end of Evangelion. Saying it shattered my brain would be an understatement. The series follows the life of Makoto Ito, a sincere and selfless. <laughs> oh god, even I can't make that joke seriously. Allow me to rephrase. The series follows the life of Makoto Ito, the ignorant and clueless Casanova, who's a high school boy living his ordinary school days until he sets his eyes upon the first of our two heroines, Kotonaha Katsura. And what starts as a simple, innocent crush becomes the spark that lights the flame of this living hell after Makoto obtains love advice from the second heroine of our series, Sekai Sayonji. It's the interactions between these three that make School Days what it is. While there are other characters featured throughout the series, in the end of it all, the series begins and ends with this trio. And allow me to guarantee you one thing. The trio you thought you knew at the time of episode 1 will no longer exist by the time you reach episode 12. The events that occur within School Days are so gut-wrenching, brain-rotting, and dare I say dodgy that our characters' personalities and moral compasses are completely and utterly destroyed by the end of the series. It ends up making Light Yagami seem like the best guy ever. And for a series titled School Days, it gives us the perfect example of some destroyed youths. Now, if you're somehow unaware, School Days, or as I like to call it, the anti clanad is a harem anime made in 2007 by the studio TNK, which made another popular anime. And if you're familiar with that other popular anime, then you should know very well how School Days is about to go down. The whole premise of the series is the love story of Makoto, and how you're so terribly bad at handling it that this anime could very well be turned into an Indian drama with the amount of unbelievable crap going on. Now, the characters of this series are flawed, and I don't mean in the way like whatever Every character should have some sort of flaw to make them real, I mean in the way that none of these characters have any redeeming traits. Kotona as a character is probably the one with the most redeeming traits in this series due to her being a shy and sweet innocent character, until she completely loses it because of Makoto's bullcrap. And of course, she would have been a bearable character if it wasn't for the fact she's ridiculously and utterly and unbelievably stupid. I mean, you would have to be more down bad than Misa to forgive Makoto for everything he did to Kotonaha throughout school days. And don't even get me started on Sakai. She may look like Furukawa Nagisa, but believe me, they are both on different ends of the spectrum. If either sum her up, then she'd be a crappy, backstabbing, lying, selfish, crappy, idiotic, crappy character. She may feel guilty for her actions during the first half of the story, but in the end of it all, she still goes along with Makoto's bullcrap anyway, betraying everyone in the process, even her closest friends. It's hard to even feel bad for her when you don't even have a reason to like her, considering the fact all she has done is manipulate the people around her to get what she wants. Why she wants it, God knows. And then there's the fact she caused all of this. Originally, she set out to be the matchmaker between Makoto and Kotonaha, but after finally getting them together, she goes and does that? And it's that one goddamn action that causes this whole love triangle or pentagon, even hexagon, screw it, this love rhombical side of the cahedron to even start. But just maybe, just maybe, if it ended with that one kiss, things wouldn't have gone to hell and back. But oh boy. It's all thanks to her giving Makoto some practice to make sure his brain understands how to actually handle dating a girl, because I mean, if a guy has to use a goddamn love manual, then something is wrong. And it's from that point where everything starts to go downhill, unbelievably fast. It goes to crap so fast that a flash would be considered a slowpoke. But before I go further, I think it's time to get to the part I've been dreading this entire video, Makoto Ito. And no, not producer Makoto Ito, I mean freaky Makoto Ito. If you've been paying attention to any of the problems I've said so far, you'd notice that the root of all of them was this one goddamn guy. Curious on why he's so terrible? Sakai has it down perfect for you. 
Makoto is quite literally the root of all evil in this series. And if you try to tell me that he's only bad because of what Sakai did, then let me tell you he was already a terrible person long before that, with him displaying some unusual violent tendencies. Probably because of his bloodline, but that is a whole other rabbit hole. As the series goes on, he only gets worse and worse becoming a scum that shows no remorse for anything he's done, with the only thing he cares about being himself. To the point where he even considers caring about Sakai a total bother. Plus, on many occasions, a total hypocrite. At one moment he may show no care in the world for Kotona at all, and once it becomes convenient for him, suddenly he has actual human remorse. But don't let school days trick you, they may lead you on at times to believe Makoto's worth feeling sorry for, but in the end of it all, he is a guy that lies to get what he wants, and what he wants is... And once he gets a taste of it, what he wants next is... After some more of that, good old Makoto wanted. Yeah, I think you get the gist of it now. The scumbag ends up going between 8 different girls throughout the series, and according to my Asian blood, that's a girl every 1.5 seconds. I mean episodes, Jesus Christ, I wouldn't be surprised if it was seconds, honestly. And even then, that's only the confirmed on-screen girls. It's very much hinted and safe to assume he knows a lot more than that. I couldn't even tell you how this guy managed to get all these girls when somehow he looks less interesting than Kirito and has a more boring personality than Asuna. If I had to pick between having a conversation with Makoto Ito or watching paint dry, I'd rather jump off a cliff, but Makoto wouldn't even be my fifth answer. But of course, by anime rules, him being a total loser attracts all the girls. Honestly, the scenarios in the series get so bizarre it may very well actually be a soap opera. Hell, we even get the slap of all slaps. Of course, that slap leads us into possibly one of the best anime arcs to ever exist. The School Days Festival arc. Up until this point in the series, School Days was a slow burn that steadily got worse with each episode. But across these three episodes, you will witness the most steep decline in human sanity than you've ever seen. With Makoto committing cold hearted betrayals like as nothing, and Taisuke casually committing actual crimes, it's from the festival and beyond where School Days earned its title of being an infamous anime. And I genuinely wish it could have ended here, but dear god does it get worse. With Setsuna's reveal of her moving to France, her permanent parting with Sakai means the only person left to comfort her will be the worst of them all, Makoto Ito. As per usual school day's fashion, Setsuna has to convince Makoto to make sure Sakai will be okay. And as per usual Makoto Ito fashion, he does the exact opposite of this. With all that happening, you'd think school days couldn't possibly get any worse, and oh boy. To top everything off, the festival segment of School Days concludes the most unexpected curveball. Yep, she's pregnant now. After hearing all this, you could only expect an anime like School Days to have the worst of all ratings. And don't worry, it does. After previously being number one, but we do not talk about that. You may be wondering, the anime is rated so incredibly low and yet everyone still mentions it. The reason? is because of the ending we didn't deserve, but dear god I am so happy we got. Now what is the ending of School Days you may ask? It's quite literally the most beautiful piece of media I've ever come across. If it wasn't for this ending, School Days would have remained a helpless anime that could have passed as a Wattpad story made by some 14 year old. But it's thanks to this ending, School Days remains as the masterpiece of the century. Yeah, you heard me. Masterpiece of the century. I mean, just look at all these wonderful School Days enjoyers. Like, come on! Who wouldn't enjoy such a beautiful gift to humanity? Please help me, I'm being forced to say this against my will by producer Makoto Ito. So while the anime would have been completely dead, the ending allows the series to hold onto life support for its dear life. I don't know who told you it'd be a good breakdown of the harem genre, but don't believe a word they say. Without the ending, School Days would have been a cluster of one-dimensional characters with some of the worst writing ever. Although, I guess that is just the harem genre in a nutshell, huh? But on a serious note, I genuinely think School Days is one of those special anime. The whole time not once did I ever get bored, and my total watch counter has been brought up to 5. It's an anime where one moment you can be on the edge of your seat, and the next, you're ripping out your hair out of secondhand embarrassment. Each episode you're thinking, surely, surely it can't get worse, and each episode it gets worse and worse. 
from very unpleasant recorded footage to nice boats, it caused my brain to rot down to my last remaining brain cell. But hey, at least we still have best girl Setsuna. No, no, Setsuna, stop! Oh, now, while the characters of this series may very well have no redeeming qualities about them, that was the whole intention. From a visual novel with several endings, they chose to adapt the one where all hell breaks loose. And I respect it. Makoto Ito is pure scum and we should not feel any remorse for him. His downfall is one of the hardest things I've ever had to watch. To see a normal-ish guy turn to a scum who can't take responsibility for his actions and simply blame it onto others was painful. It's one of the only times I couldn't help but scream at my own screen because what the hell is this guy even doing? But to see him decline to a pathetic loser alongside his death made it all worth it. I legitimately could never think of a better ending for this anime because as Hikari said, This may be an anime where the animation and art is completely dreadful. This may be an anime where the sound effects are completely cheesy. This may be an anime where the characters are the most brain dead idiots ever, but School Days is an experience I will never forget. In conclusion, School Days has a whole load of and a whole bunch of It's the most unrealistic anime ever with the most forced drama in the world, with the only moral of the whole story being Use your goddamn brain! But hey, the music was pretty good I guess. And on that note, I'm Tenshi, and this was School Days. Mata ne mina!